At Staples Business Advantage, nothing can top the smarts and instincts of the thousands of experts on our team. While AI excels at processing data, automating tasks, and providing insights for better decision-making. And when they're used together, they're, they're far, far more, more powerful, powerful than, than either, either is alone. alone. Whoa. Whoa. I've never felt more alive. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations, plus our team's experience, to make business easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Hi, I'm Jim Purdue of Purdue Chicken. Unlike our competitor, who's gone back to feeding their chickens antibiotics, we at Purdue will remain no antibiotics ever. No antibiotics ever because we raise our chickens in a healthy environment, so they don't need them. No antibiotics ever takes more time and money, but it's the right thing to do. So when you buy chicken, look for the Purdue label to make sure your chicken is no antibiotics ever. Get the facts at Purdue.com. For exclusive podcasts and more, sign up at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. I'm Rebecca Lavoie, and this is Crime Writers On. Crime Writers On is the original true crime review podcast that digs into true crime, pop culture, other podcasts. And on this episode, a Welsh cop thinks she's met the man of her dreams, only to learn he's a bank robber. Why does everyone think she was in on it? We'll review the podcast, Stolen Hearts. Joining me to get that done and more is true crime author, TV journalist, and host of the These Are Their Stories podcast, my husband and the man who stole my heart, Kevin Flynn. Hello, Kevin. And I also was a bank robber, so it's like so much. I have been wondering why you disappear for like days on end. You think I'm umpiring baseball, but that's not the mask I'm wearing. I, I gotta go drop off the kids. Of the kids. <laughs> also with us is private investigator. Is he certified- from New Zealand now? Is that- oh, I'm. So- <laughs> I just met a New Zealander this week, and like I did her, I did like a an invitation of her once, and now I cannot. You've in- you've internalized it. I cannot do any other accents. Introduce Laura as somebody from New Zealand. It's a Kiwi. <laughs> I can't. I know my accent is terrible. Suzanne Serretta would not be impressed. Do it. Do it. <laughs> 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 Lara Brica. <laughs> uh, and also with us is private investigators. Uh, certified private investigator. Certified pizza detective. Peace. <laughs> Resident cat lady and author of the <laughs> the Piper Green series of cozy mysteries. <laughs> I can't do it. Mysteries. Lara Brica. <laughs> Hello, Lara. <laughs> I can't do it. And that was all I got. <laughs> Hello, Lara Bricker. Hello. Listen, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. What the David's fuck was that? We literally have <laughs> listeners in New Zealand, and I apologize horribly because that's racist, Chris. I apologize horribly. No one gets horribly. that reference. They do. People, know, <laughs> people in New Zealand know about fucking Flight of the Concords. That they wasn't do. from Flight of the Concords. That was from At Midnight. Oh, you're right. That was from At Midnight. Right. But that was the dude from Flight of the Concords. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They're all from New Zealand. Anyway, finally, our resident Doubting Thomas, author of the City Trilogy, host of the Strange Arrivals podcast, and our Patreon Deep Dive Book Club podcast host, Toby Ball. Hey, Toby. Hey, Rebecca. I was going to try some accent, but I No, that's Australia. New Zealand is different. You bad? No, New Zealand is different. For for Strange Arrivals, uh, which the, the first episode had a bunch of Australians, I actually got actual Australians to do the voices. Nice. Wow. Congratulations. That's so, so exotic. So if you have to work on your accent. So that's it, better than like Rebecca doing a Kiwi accent? I was going to get Rebecca to do all the accents. Rebecca, <laughs> like, that's your I next can't. calling. Suzanne Serretta did this whole, you know, our listener who's the accent. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, because remember we she, tried to do the, the lane. No, yes. not the rain. Yeah. When we met Suzanne in, Cal- in, in Canada, she did this incredible explanation of like, And I'm not going to remember it perfectly about like why the Australian accent is the way it is because like British people landed there and they got like sand in their mouth. I think she did that on the after show. It was incredible. And so like the accent became Mm. more more closed and then the New Zealand one evolved even further. And that's why the E's and the A's became like so closed. And that's why document, document, (laughs) document. That's all I can think about. (laughs) Anyway, um, so Kevin, this is obviously Thursday's fine program. What is happening on Monday's show? On Monday, we're going to be talking about the Hulu original movie, Boston Strangler. Oh, who's in that? Kira Knightley. Yes, I thought there was a famous person in yeah. that. Yeah. 
All right. Kieran Knightley. <laughs> what did they say in Boston? Kieran Knightley. Natalie Portman Light. Kieran Knightley. Okay, what yeah. channel is that on? It's on Hulu. Hulu. Oh, goody. Okay. Hulu. You know, you stream it. You go to your TV and stream it. Oh, you're going to Boston now. <laughs> yeah. You know where they get that? They get that in Mattapan. At Mattapan. Highland. Oh, my God. Newton. Your, your thing with <laughs> Newton Toby. Falls. With Toby, we're just naming Boston towns. St- Stone. And you know what it was? Right. It was Belmont. Death in Belmont by Sebastian. Belmont. Liner. Yeah. We were we were uh, taking the off. The Quabbin Reservoir. We were on our like jet blue flight to Mexico like last weekend. And you know that thing where you can put the map on your little TV screen in front of you? Kevin just started doing that, just naming the towns, like I, like in that, because he was like doing a callback to our podcast. And there's a lot of weird towns around Fort the airport. Fort Sarah or something. <laughs> and he couldn't stop. No, and the person stop. next to us in the seat was really impressed. Just oh, yeah? That yeah. <laughs> we do the worst accents. I do too. Not All my you. accents sound the same. I actually think your, I think your Massachusetts accents are pretty good because you have the your variety. Your Fritz down. Weatherby accent is good. <gasps> No one knows who Fritz is. Our, our, our New Hampshire listeners will really appreciate this. <clears throat> this was the biggest whorehouse in Merrimack County. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. All right. So I am dying to talk about the podcast we're talking about because I have feelings that Laura Bricker is going to have feelings about it and that Toby Ball is going to have feelings about it. Mm-hmm. So I really want to get to it. Can we do Let's that? Do Go. It. Do it. Do All it. All right. Let's drop that first clip right now. Leading off. I'm just thinking, what's the point? There is absolutely no point in just looking for a relationship. You'd be better off on your own. But obviously I didn't want to be on my own. I think everyone wants to have that relationship that they feel wanted and appreciated and loved in. After a series of failed romances, Welsh police sergeant Jill Evans thinks she's found the man of her dreams. Dean Jenkins is attentive and a bit mysterious, but they decide to have a baby. After dating for what, like three weeks? What Jill doesn't know is that Dean has been supplementing his income as an armed robber. You have to go in calm, assertive, let them understand that you mean business. If you're screaming like a crazy fool, give us the fucking money, I need the fucking money. They don't know what's going on. Everybody's running around screaming, no one knows who to look at. You have to take control. After his arrest, all eyes turn to Jill. Her colleagues are suspicious of her claims that she didn't know Dean was a robber. If she can't convince them she was in the dark about her boyfriend's crimes, it's more than just her career on the line. Trying to process what sounds like a solid case to bang her up. Anyone looking in would go, well, she's got to be involved. He's ringing her before or after these robberies. So I could see exactly how it looked. From Wondering a Novel comes Stolen Hearts. Host Carrie Gondleman brings together Jill, Dean, and all the important players to revisit the case. The podcast mixes true crime and rom-com for a breezy look at a very British scandal. Spoiler alert, we are going to be talking about plot points from Stolen Hearts. So if you want to remain spoiler-free, go to the estimated time cone in our show notes for our thumbs up or thumbs down reviews. All right, so we need to talk about the opening scene in this podcast. Nosy neighbors. Looking in on an arrest. That was the opening scene. I think we heard from the other people like one more time in the podcast, Laura Bricker. But could you not relate to the people looking out their curtains as the police came down the street and they were like, oh, it's that guy Jill's been seeing. I could see neighbors just peering around corners and peeping over fences. Everybody could see everything open, all the curtains, every blind. Officers rifling through all of her things, pulling out bits and pieces from everywhere. What did you think when we first came into this podcast, the narration style, the sort of very light touch? Everyone knows about this story. Now we're really going to get into it style of the podcast. It's super fun. And I can totally relate to looking out my window and being like, oh, they're finally coming for that guy. Watch his porn across the way. We knew he was going down, but I loved the narration by the actor and comedian, Carrie. She just had like a really fun sort of way and like method of delivery that made it witty and sort of snappy and also moved the story along. Like I would kind of smirk at certain expressions that she used and the way that she delivered stories. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's like 
if there was something like I'd been watching in my town, like the bleep bleep spa, and I saw the police coming as I was looking, I'd be like, oh, they're finally coming for that place. We knew it was going to happen one day. But it just, it was light. It's it's a pretty serious topic. But I think the way that they then pivot to talking about Jill's wild love life and her sort of unlucky in love misadventures makes it very relatable because we've all known somebody like Jill. Yeah. So Toby, you I'm just going to tip your hand right now. I feel like this is an awfully light story <laughs> for a podcast. Can you tell me why you feel that way? Um, yeah, I just kind of felt like I spent a lot of time listening to things that didn't seem like they were super important to the story and just kind of like went on and on and on about men's, you know, hygiene products and sex toys, you know, different things about the cops and whales and sex toys and like this, I, you know, I'll come out, you know, spoiler alert, this wasn't really for me. Uh, and I spent a lot of time, I, I listened to a lot of this in the car for some reason. And I was like, w- why am I listening to this? Because like, we I, made you. Exactly. Because um, <laughs> apparently I'm getting wait, wait, paid. Wait, wait. I'm getting paid to do it. Because Kevin made you. Well, I, I forgive him because you didn't see nothing uh, more than makes up for it. But for this... Yeah, I just, there's just a lot of stuff. I'm like, why am I listening to this? This isn't interesting. I don't care. So yeah, I mean, I hope you guys have a lot of fun things to say about this because when it was over, I was like, I feel like I could have like read a three paragraph, like encapsulation of what happened and been just as happy as I am after listening to six hours or whatever it is about the details of these things. Okay, I will tell you, I was surprised it was only six episodes. Was Wondery podcast usually longer? I do also agree it could have been even shorter than it was. Six did feel like a stretch, but six is still short for a Wondery podcast, right? It is. But it could have been shorter. I agree with that. That being said, Kevin, what did you think of sort of the style of this podcast, the sort of way we went into it, Jill as a, you know, the way she's presented as a, because by the way, I know these are real people and I hate to use people as quote characters, but they do actually present them as characters in this podcast, literally. Yeah. You know, I feel like uh, this has kind of a Dirty John kind of vibe to it. Well, maybe not the vibe, but it, but but the idea around it that you've got a, uh, for lack of a better term, a stupid Deborah kind of character. At least you have a female protagonist that makes questionable decisions regarding not only her uh, career, but her love life. And then you've got a dashing imposter in the in the uh, character Quasi, of Dean. Yeah. Quasi, yeah. How the fuck did they get him on this podcast? That's a great question, because usually, I mean, I was like, listen, I'm like, oh, that's Dean. Well, maybe... And his mom. And his, and his mom. sister. How well, did they get all these people? I mean, we kind of figure out at the very end. But usually when you have... That guy, come on. It's like the world stops. Like when Mordecai makes an appearance and, do you know, Mordecai, it's like somebody pulled the air brake on the train, you know, and it's like, okay, now we have to talk to this. Dean was just sort of going through the, like, through the podcast is he was just sort of like another voice narrating the story. They didn't make a big deal about having Dean. And I think that's great because then it, it was able to save sort of some of the punch for the end When they finally bring the two of them together, it sort of makes the aha, this is why we've been hearing from Dean, because he walked to the studio and decided to do it for all these other reasons. Wait, why did he decide to do it? Because my guess is that he went to this, you know, the last scene where they bring the two of them together in the studio. Yeah. Right. You know, and then we know that after that, Jill leaves. Dean is still there. So they just keep rolling. They're like, here's our interview. This is our chance to talk to Ah, Dean. I see. I mean, I'm not I don't know if he had talked to them before that or whatever. Oh, see, you you extrapolated that. I did I was just like the whole time I was like, how the hell did they get this guy? I don't know how they convinced I mean, I think the way they probably convinced him. That's really smart. I didn't think of that. Is that, you know, how about we put the two like I think he wants to re engage with Jill in some manner. Dean pushes himself out of his chair, extending his arms towards her. Come on. No. Shake no, my hand at no, least. No, 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 shake no, my no. hand at least. No. What? No, no, it's not shaking your hand. <laughs> Never shaking your hand before. I'm not shaking it now. Damn. Bye bye. So, Laura Bricker, what did you think of sort of like the entertaining notes of the story? Because one of the things they do, they start each episode with a translation for Americans about some phrases you'll be hearing in the podcast. Like, Big Ben is a clock 
but it also it means something else in this podcast. My favorite was it's a real marmalade dropper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that. I'm going to be like, that was a real marmalade dropper. I'm going to use that this weekend, I think. I loved it. I mean, I agreed with Toby a little bit. I said, you know, I think this is entertaining. I'm not sure if it was like a six episode podcast, but I listened to it and it was very entertaining as I was walking the neighborhood looking for police spying on my neighbors or something. But, you know, I think it definitely added an element of fun the way they did that. There, there was a lot of fun little tidbits thrown in here, like the name of the shower gels that Dean was making, the beat the filth and it's a stick up, which uh, later the police were like, you should have known that was a sign. And I'm like, I just thought it was a silly naming. But, you know, I, I just think it was easy and entertaining to listen to. And yeah, it was like, there wasn't any big shocker. Like we've heard other stories like this before, like what sets this story apart? But at the same time, that host and the writing and just the setup made it really entertaining to listen to. So Toby, you made a comment about the sound design in this podcast, which is something that we talk about a lot on this show. And I am usually anti a lot of sound design. This show for me is extremely stylized. So in this one instance, like a lot of sound design bothers me less because it's so over the top where it's like, we're just in your face with this very goofy storytelling style. So we're just going to throw a lot of sound design at you too. But that didn't work for you from what I'm gleaning. Uh, maybe I had the wrong attitude. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. It's okay <laughs> for it not to be to for admit. you. You should just represent yourself as a critic right now, Toby. Go for it. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing was like just super slick. And it, and it was both like the Foley stuff. There's a lot of doors slamming and people walking and glasses tinking and all kinds of stuff like that. And then... And fingernails breaking. Yes, fingernails breaking, being flicked into food and then ingested. But, you know, that along with the fact that everybody talks really smoothly and... And I was trying to figure, it's like, do all these people, is this just the way you go there, like to Wales and just everybody's like super smooth? Or are they like retaking things a bunch of times so that they get it out in a way that's very, you know, pleasing to the ear or what's going on? And then they have these things, which I assume are, are recreations because the sound quality is so good, but I can't really tell if the voices are different than the people who are actually being interviewed who are those people. And then occasionally she'll say that this is a recreation, but I don't think she says it for all the recreations. I think she just says it for some of the recreations. So with all Tell that- me, if the world heard what your unedited voice sounded like. Yes. No, I like a hundred percent. Livy does. Yeah, Livy does. That's why I resent it so much when people can talk smoothly just off the top of their heads. Um, so- yeah, I, I don't know. The whole thing just kind of felt like, you know, it's a lot of like smoothness and slickness. And, and the end result is this kind of story that, again, like if you gave me like a 30 minute, a single 30 minute podcast, it'd be like, oh, wow, that's kind of weird that that happened. But having to listen to six episodes about it, you know, after a while, I was like, my God, I don't I don't give a shit about this. And, and yet there I was. And yet here we are in the business section. Yay! Stepped in on that one. Uh, right now on our Patreon, go to patreon.com slash partners in crime media. You'll get about 130 exclusive podcasts. They include the Crime Writers on After Show, Toby Ball's Deep Dive Book Club podcast, and the latest episode of Leave It to Bricker. Yes. In which our intrepid explorer, Laura Bricker. Intrepid. Did I say that right? Yeah, intrepid, intrepid, intrepid. I wasn't correcting you; I was repeating you. She went to visit a cat cafe in the next town, but was sorely disappointed. Oh, because it wasn't actually there weren't actual cats there. No, Laura, do you want to kind of give a little idea about what happened? I mean, I guess I'll give you a spoiler, but um, so I've been waiting for a long time for this to open. You had to pay like fourteen dollars to go sit in the room with the cats, and it really wasn't what I was expecting. Boo. That's, yeah, because like I can sit at home with my cats for free. Yeah, I know people but, who went as well. Yeah, were they but equally they, disappointed, Toby? Very much so. Oh, good. Oh, goody. It's not just me. <laughs> but there was a book in, on the library shelf there, which was How to Talk to Your Cat About Gun Safety. What? <laughs> yeah, it was so fucked up. 
<laughs> it was yeah. like propaganda disguised as a cat book. It was bonkers. Uh, on Patreon, you can uh, sign up for our live recording. We're going to be recording an upcoming podcast episode in front of our live virtual audience on Patreon. That recording is going to happen on March 29th. It's for our review of the CBC podcast. Get ready for this title. <gasps> The no good, terribly kind, wonderful lives and tragic deaths of Barry and Honey Sherman. That's Kathleen Goldhar, right? Yeah, who did uh, You Know Mordecai. Do You Know Mordecai. Do You Know Mordecai. Which was one of my favorite podcasts of a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. All right. Also, in Partners in Crime World, uh, there's the new episode of These Are Their Stories Out. We're talking about the SVU episode where the special guest star was Snoop Dogg. Yeah. And uh, he got into a diss war with a rapper played by Orlando Jones. Uh, and it A led... barely recognizable Orlando Jones. I don't know if uh, life has been so great to Orlando Jones. I'm just Jones. saying, I know what Orlando Jones looks like. Yeah. When you did the Hey, hey It's That Guy segment and you said, that's Orlando Jones, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. That's Orlando Jones? I mean, I, I, I think that the... Makeup and stuff was just very effective in the episode or something because I did not recognize him. Who's Orlando Jones? Uh, he was in that commercial where it was like, make seven up yours. That's literally not what he, like, that's in part Drumline, of his uh, career. He was the band director in Drumline. He's a great actor, but, like, I did not recognize him in that episode. Yeah, now, if you're uh, interested in joining us on Patreon, you can try Patreon for 14 days for free. Just sign up. You can cancel anytime before that uh, that window closes. You get full access to everything, and we'd love to have you, especially if you want to join us on that show. All right, so, Kevin, before we wrap up the business section, do we have any Patreon patron saves of the week this week? Uh, we do. Uh, do you want me to say them with a New Zealand accent? Yeah, go give it a shot. I haven't really worked on mine. These are our Patreon just, patrons. Just close your mouth with all your A's and E's. Just try it. Our Patreon. No, I'm not going to do it. Do our it. Patreon patron saints are Colby Ricks and Colin Simpson. Bless you. Bless you guys. Colin Simpson and Colby Ricks, you're the best. Uh, all of our listeners are the best, but especially you two this week. Thank you for supporting us on Patreon. Thanks to everybody who does, and thanks to everyone who doesn't and just muscles through the business section. Kevin, can I go ahead and fade that music out right now? Do it. All right, I'm going to get that done. At Staples Business Advantage, nothing can top the smarts and instincts of the thousands of experts on our team. While AI excels at processing data, automating tasks, and providing insights for better decision making. And when they're used together, they're, they're far, far more powerful, powerful than, than either, either is, is alone. alone. Whoa. Whoa. I've never felt more alive. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make business easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Do you ever meet someone who seems kind of off? Whether it's a creepy neighbor or random phone number that keeps calling you, Truthfinder has you covered. You can search for people by name, address, phone number, email, and more. Truthfinder can be especially helpful for running confidential background checks on anyone you're planning to meet from online dating apps. Go to truthfinder.com slash podcasts for a special offer. That's truthfinder.com slash podcasts to access your special offer today. I want people to understand this ordeal. It's taken a toll on both of us. Casey Anthony's parents respond after 15 years of allegations. I've gotten blamed for something I didn't do, and it tears me up inside. This can change our life. This is serious. This is their final response. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Casey Anthony's parents, the lie detector test. Watch now, only on A&E. And watch next day on the A&E app. So, Laura Bricker, there's a section of the podcast at the beginning. This was the part that I enjoyed. I'm not saying this is a perfect podcast. I'm be honest. But I did like the section where they talked about Jill's romantic escapades that sort of led up to her relationship with Dean. I feel like we do not get enough interiority of women in shows like this, that shows about relationships gone wrong, the Dirty Johns, mm -hmm. the stalking shows, the whatever. It was a very compact, tight look at a woman who's like done bad in love, right? Yeah. I kind of, you know, it's a little voyeuristic having this window into her love life, but I was there for it because like I said earlier, like 
we all know somebody like this. And, you know, I the have a hot mess in our life. <laughs> I, we all know a hot mess. And we look forward to the updates about what's happening. Like I have this one friend who's like on Tinder and gives me these updates. And I'm just like, how's it going this week on the Tinder? And like, I want to, I'm like, what about this guy? What about that guy? And like, it's kind of fun to like live vicariously through these people. But it's also kind of sad because in Jill's case, you realize that she really just wants to find somebody and she's just making horrible decisions. We, again, we all know people that make horrible decisions about dating the wrong person and the wrong type of guy and then repeating that or wrong type of girl and repeating that pattern over and over again. But it was, you know, misadventures uh, in love. And then she had the guy that like was married and I loved that guy. And the she Bruce was like, Willis? He, that, I, that only she thought looked like Bruce Willis. And then like, that was like hot sex or whatever. It was like crazy. And then like, they break up and then like, he's like married. And he's like, no, not doing it. So I enjoyed all that part because I think it set it up really well for what was to come and why what was to come happened. You know what I liked about that? And like, I wanted to stick with you for a minute on this. Mm hmm. Okay, so we learn a few things there. We learn that she had, and I'm by the way, when I say hot mess, it's, it sounds sort of dickish, and I don't mean it to be. We sort of learn about her misadventures in love. We learn that she had this affair with this married guy. It led to a, a pregnancy that she decided to terminate. You know, she had an abortion at one point, and it's sort of like talked about. There is no judgment in any of this in the podcast. It's just sort of told like this happened and this happened. And this is what she did, and this is what happened mm -hmm. to her. I see. When I say I like this podcast, that is what I'm talking about. When I think about Dirty John, some of the things I don't like about Dirty John, even though I think Dirty John, you know, in some ways deserves to be on, like, in some ways, the Mount Rushmore true crime podcast, only because it was the first of sort of its kind in the genre, is that it did cast Deborah in a light where she could be thought of as like, quote, as Kevin says, it's not called Stupid Deborah, it's called Dirty John. This podcast talks about how other people judged Jill, but when it talks about Jill's choices in love and life, it just tells you what happened. And our narrator isn't like, isn't Jill sad and pathetic for her poor choices in life and love? She's such a loser. People think, no, it's just like, it's so matter of fact, which by the way, is how life actually fucking is. Life is actually matter of fact. People get married, they get divorced, they decide to go into a safe relationship and that relationship doesn't work out. There's a man that they actually are like super into and he's the wrong one for them. That goes on for way longer than it should. That is actually how it actually fucking happens. And that's what I like about this podcast is that it doesn't judge that. I, I think there's something about that that I liked that maybe didn't resonate with the guys here in the in the panel that I, I found refreshing. No, I, I liked it because I think this is the type of thing that I talk about with my girlfriends all the time. Like when we all sit around and talk about what people are up to, these are exactly the kind of conversations we have. And we don't judge each other. We support each other. But we also have a lot of fun telling these kind of stories. That's right. And I'm not saying this podcast is a feminist podcast, but that part of the storytelling I found kind of feminist in that it had like no value judgment placed on, it, especially like the abortion section. I, I, I really I really thought so. Like I was like, this was handled super duper well in a way an American produced podcast I don't think would have handled it as well. I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out there. It definitely had the most vibrators of any podcast that <laughs> you talked about. That played roles in the story. Didn't you think the MacGuffin, though, was like when like the, her friend was taking all the vibrators out of the house? Didn't you think that was going to come back to haunt <laughs> yeah. her in some way? Because among the vibrators was a gun. You know, Whoa. something else. Her friend, her friend came to clean out her house before the police We search. called this one the smoking gun. Yeah. It was like her friend came to clean out her house before the police came to search. Her, her search that she consented to, by the way, because yeah. she was a cop. And like, so her friend came over to clean up the house because they're going to come search the house. And it's like, just take my sex toys out. Didn't you think that because they told us that, like the fact that the house was searched was going to come back? Yes. And now we know it was just because they wanted us to laugh at it. Exactly. So what did you think of the, what did you think of that sort of the way they laid that? I mean, what did you think you about You know what I think about the vibrator named yes. Big Ben? Yes. <laughs> I, I think if she had stuck to the vibrator, she wouldn't have been with Dean. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. You actually have a note, Kevin. I can't think of a podcast in which vibrators keep popping up as an important plot point. Vibrators do pop up sometimes. Yeah. They too. So what do you think? Do you think, Kevin, that Jill should have known or suspected that something was up with Dean? Well, that's sort of one of the central questions of the podcast, right? Yeah, And I don't know if they really dwell on that or give that sort of a deep thought and, you know, maybe it's just kind of the nature of it. But we are kind of led to believe that she was maybe not acting in, you know, the most logical way, in the way that helps her the most, but that on its face, she didn't know. And why would she be expected to know? And everybody who is questioning that is like a direct antagonist to her, right? It's like the other police officers are like, yeah, you should have known all this. And I, I, I don't know if the host like really said, okay, let's take a minute. Maybe I, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't remember this. And it's like, let's really just kind of examine that for a second. It just sort of goes with the assumption that, I mean, could she have been an accomplice? Could those phone calls right before the bank robberies had been something more than she just says? Nope. I don't know. Nope. It's possible. Nope. But we don't even go. Why? No. No. The answer is no. He was just a dude with a girlfriend experience covering for his fucking escapades. He called her all the time. No way right. did she fucking know. All right. But, <laughs> but like the Alec Murdoch digital evidence that everybody was like, oh, this proves this, this proves that. It's not unreasonable to say, why would he be calling her right before every bank robbery? You could say it's because he's getting his rocks off. It could also be she's in on it. Now, I don't think she's in on it, but I just don't know whether or not they really took the time to examine that or address it more than just everybody thought that. And how does she prove that she didn't? More plausible explanation, Toby, yes or no? He was still married and he was lying about the state of his marriage. And the reason he called her before the bank robberies is because he was out of the house. And that's when he would call his fucking girlfriend because he was out of the house. And he's like, hey, babe, I'm out. Uh, I'll see you soon. I got to go right now. Boom. Love ya. Got then something he coming would up go for rob work. Fucking bank. <laughs> I mean, isn't that more plausible? I'll bring you a new vibrator with the money from my bank proceeds. I'll buy you Jeez. some new boots. <laughs> you get a ten vibrators today. <laughs> do you think Jill knew? Toby? One for each I'm finger. curious. Jill if someone didn't I, I, like the podcast, do you think Jill knew? <laughs> yes or no? So I guess my feeling is, is that it would surprise me if she knew, like, it'd be one thing if they had like sort of this normal, like they see each other all the time relationship and then suddenly he's not around very much, but their relationship was always like this as far as I yep. can tell. Right. So the baseline for the relationship is I don't see you very often. You're on all these trips, you're doing all this stuff, you check in quite a bit, but you know, there's never a point at which she does know what he's up to all the time. It, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, she she wants in her mind have these assumptions about what's going on while he's off doing stuff. And it probably has to do with men with care products. But uh, yeah, I don't. Their relationship I, is a mess. Their yeah, relationship just is not a healthy it make, relationship. Like, yeah. If she had known, like that would have been nice. But the idea that she should have known or that even that it was likely that she knew just to me, it just doesn't seem like their relationship was ever like that. So nope. it just seems like an unreasonable expectation. To be clear, I'm not on team accomplice, but I just wanted to point out that that possibility wasn't seriously explored by the podcast. However, based on what we know about the podcast and the tone and the direction that it was going, I'm not surprised it wasn't totally, you know, ripped apart, you know, like it was, I'm not a monster season three. Uh, so I think that it's fine that it wasn't. Okay, so I have an alternate world for this podcast. One of the reasons I like this podcast, and this is extra textual. So I hate to say that it's influencing my review because it is, but it's not. This podcast opens a world of possibilities for me. So You mean leaving me for a bank robber? No. So Dean and Jill had a... Sh so the podcast paints it as a good relationship, but it's actually a shitty fucking relationship. He's lying to her the whole time they're together. She thinks he's the love of her life. He's clearly lying to her the whole time. There's a whole part of this that's not in the podcast. He has a, a wife that clearly that relationship sucks. He also has two children, right? That are non-characters in this whole thing. So to me, there's a whole other podcast 
of like these two daughters, like in five years who are like my dad, the bank robber. Right. <laughs> and the cop. That like that's my, a career. That's a good career day. My dad, the bank robber and the cop that he built that and left my mom for like, I just kept thinking of these poor daughters of his because by the way, he's like leaving his wife for Jill. You never talk about that. Any possibility of them combining families, right? You never talk about Jill becoming a potential stepmother to his kids, right? There's never a combine. It's always like he's leaving, 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 never a combining in my mind. Like, I'm like, this is a, I knew immediately this is a shit show of a relationship because you hear about their bickering and fighting and whatever. And you even hear Dean's mom being like, what the fuck are you doing when you're saying they're having a baby? It never sounds like a good and healthy relationship. But in my mind, it opened up this world of possibilities of all this other, con- like a parallel podcast that could be made by this same person about this same story from a completely different perspective. I know that sounds nuts, but I was just imagining like, the other podcast I could listen to immediately after this one, season two. Stolen Hearts. <laughs> Stolen Hearts season two. Dean's like kids. And it would be com- like, I don't know. I, I Is that weird? Yeah. Next question. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons so- why you liked it is because you could imagine a completely different podcast with some of the same characters. Yes. Is this right. like when you're having sex with somebody and you imagine somebody else's face on the person you're having sex with? No, it was just because, that. no, you know what it was? It was that I, Show it's me like, like that it's just that I think the podcast is on its face, transparent about the fact that like no one is getting the whole story here. And, and, and especially Jill is a trans, there's like, there's a fakeness about online dating that's shown up front. There's a fakeness about Dean that we get. His face is on like shampoo bottles and shit. That's the most she ever knows about him. and their relationship sucks my favorite character and real person in the whole thing is her union rep who's like (laughs) by her side the peter or whatever his name is the whole damn time was like i'm watching the fast and the furious in the car that was while she's in prison (laughs) visiting her boyfriend he's like i tried to stick by you but you just keep fucking this up over and over again selling your story to magazines i don't know what to do with you the next season could be his story telling that, the that story. Through. I would listen to. <laughs> that's the, that's the one exist. I would listen to. You yeah. see what I mean, Toby? There's like a world of perspectives here. That's that's what I kept thinking. I, I guess it just opened up my imagination. So to what you should do is be the showrunner for like the TV show that they make from this when it the rights get sold, and you can do that. It can be sort of a like a multi point of view. Thing. Couldn't you imagine somebody awesome playing him? Like he's the be- he would be for me the main character in this thing. No, I would I would definitely like following him around and having him like have his usual sh- stuff plus this completely yes. bad shit stuff the he has to deal with. The opening scene of the series would be him getting a phone call where he got this case and this was his cop union case. And he's like the boring guy in the office and it's like, "Hello." And this is his cop union case and he's like, "What?" And then, like, he has to go to... More accents, everybody. There's a lot of vibrators over here. (laughs) This one won't turn off. It's going... (laughs) God. This episode. I'm just saying, there's a world of possibilities here. All right, should we just end it there, Kevin? Is this review wrapped up? Can can we end it 10 minutes ago? (laughs) (laughs) At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes, only algorithms. At Staples Business Advantage, furnishing your office is easy, and with the best warranty in the business, we're committed to you now and down the road. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Do you ever meet someone who seems kind of off? Whether it's a creepy neighbor or random phone number that keeps calling you, Truthfinder has you covered. You can search for people by name, address, phone number, email, and more. Truthfinder can be especially helpful for running confidential background checks on anyone you're planning to meet from online dating apps. 
Go to truthfinder.com slash podcasts for a special offer. That's truthfinder.com slash podcasts to access your special offer today. I want people to understand this ordeal. It's taken a toll on both of us. Casey Anthony's parents respond after 15 years of allegations. I've gotten blamed for something I didn't do and it tears me up inside. This can change our life. This is serious. This is their final response. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Casey Anthony's parents, the lie detector test. Watch now only on A&E and watch next day on the A&E app. All right, let's do what we do. Let's let our listeners know, should they listen to the podcast, Stolen Hearts? Laura Bricker, what do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down for this podcast? Yeah, so I went back and forth on this. I was like, I don't know why there's a podcast made about this. Um, This is just a regular story that's happened over and over. But here's the thing. I listened to this and it was really entertaining. So I'm going to give this a thumbs up. And I'm giving it the caveat that this is not like some big expose. She has written a book about her experience. Her experience has been reported in the press. What sort of sets this apart is the narrator, Carrie, who is an actor and a comedian, the fact that they have both Dean and Jill, who are the primary characters, as sources doing interviews in this. And you know what? It's just something, you know, if you or a friend or anybody has had sort of misadventures in love, online dating, ended up with people that weren't who they said they were, you're going to love this podcast. Rebecca, is that what you've had unintentional? Kevin was pointing at you in a way that was sort of... (laughs) No, he was just playing with my hair. Oh, flirt- I thought he was telling me to wrap way. it. He was like, Rebecca has No, been no, no. He was just playing with my hair in a flirty way because I was like, I was. Now it's funny you saying somebody that you didn't know. Yeah. Uh, horrible mm-hmm. things in love. Yeah. Tell me about what do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down for Stolen Hearts? Yeah, I'm a thumbs down. Uh, this is not for me, but maybe you'd like it. I don't know. Everybody else seemed to think it was fun. <laughs> It just seemed like really long. I didn't like, I didn't really connect with the story. Uh, There was a lot of times when I was like, why am I listening to this? On the other hand, it seems like everybody else kind of liked it. So uh, go ahead and listen, but just know I didn't like it. Thumbs down. Kevin Flynn. Uh, Even though I know Toby uh, said thumbs down, I'm going to go with a mild thumbs up. I thought it was entertaining. No, it's not really, no, a, Peabody worthy podcast. Nobody is like breaking any news here, but I thought it was interesting. I, I like the way that it was written. It kept it light and breezy, kept it moving along. And, you know, um, I was going to say, well, this is a bloodless crime. It's not someone actually does get killed in this. And we kind of just kind of gloss over the seriousness of that. But anyway, it kind of has a bit of a, a dirty John DNA in it, but the vibe is completely different. Not fantastic, uh, but I do think folks will enjoy it. Thumbs up. Yeah, so I'm giving this a thumbs up. Clearly, it's not like a huge like, yay, thumbs up. But like, I like Laura was entertained by this. There were some very sort of feminist elements about this. I enjoyed not because like this is like a hugely feminist story, but because like there were some very matter of fact treatments of like things that I think people would like generally judge women for in other kinds of stories. Like I think Dirty John did Deborah wrong in like many, many ways in the way that this podcast does not do Jill wrong. Um, And I liked that about this. I liked the entertainment value of it. And as I said, and it's really fucking stupid and I'll acknowledge it. I imagined other versions of this story that could be told really well. Like as Toby said, the TV version, um, that open up a world of imaginary possibilities for me. So yeah, this podcast is kind of stupid, but I really enjoyed listening to it. I couldn't help myself. It was kind of like podcast candy. Not bad. Thumbs up for me for Stolen Hearts. Good on you guys at Wondery. It could have been four episodes. I, that's my only, that's my yeah. main critique. Could have been four instead of six. But good on you for making it six instead of 10. Or zero, according to Toby. <laughs> That's going to do. Before we go, Laura Bricker, we need to ask, do we have a cat of the week this week? Oh, we do. I know Toby Ball filled in for me while I was gone. The uh, social media was a buzz about Toby's delivery mm. of the he was cat incredible. of the week. It was so earnest, Laura. Yeah. He was so invested. He I don't know if so I can much. live up to this now. I don't even know if I can come <laughs> oh, back. It's a high bar. Laura, That's seriously. For sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> Laura, you can live up to it. If okay. you thought Rebecca's New Zealand accent well, was great, you should have heard this, Toby trying to figure out all the Polish language well, this stuff. this is the fantastic thing. This is a New Zealand cat. Oh! A New Zealand kit. It's a New Zealand cat. <laughs> a potential catastrophe has been a avoided. A catastrophe. After a would-be cat burglar was caught red pod outside a home in Northland, Wait, New is it Kyan? Is this Kyan? Is it Kyan or Kyan? is it? Well, we have a listener who lives in New Zealand. Who's okay. Well, anyway, right the picture it. is the orange cat, which we know I love, with a silver pewter mug stuck on its head. The loud banging and clanging prompted people in the neighborhood to call the police. The police went to investigate suspicious activity and found a cat burglar of the four-legged variety. And there was an aluminum teapot used for watering plants stuck on the head of the ginger cat. The cat was carefully extracted from the teapot without any catastrophe and scampered off into the night, according to police. Scampered. He scampered into the night, but he really had Neat. a teapot on his head and he was banging it around and he woke up the whole neighborhood. So I'm all about this cat because it's pretty funny. And he's a ginger <laughs> Toby's, cat. Toby's, Toby's like, I am not into this cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the cat fine. He just hates he hates my attempts to do anything New Zealand. Can't me. To Laura Bricker, folks want to send you their pets of the week, any kind of animal to be cat of the week. How can they find you on social media? They can find me at Laura Bricker on Twitter or they can submit it through our Crime Murders on Discussion group. And of course, they can also email us at crimewriterson at gmail.com. Toby Ball, if folks want to reach out to you and commiserate over having to spend time with us every week, taping the stupid podcast, listening to my horrible attempts to do New Zealand accents, and having to listen to Stolen Hearts, a podcast <laughs> you hated, how can they find you on social media? At Toby Ball NH. And Kevin Flynn, if folks want to commiserate with you for having to be married with me and having to put up with my quote, laugh track for your <laughs> podcasts how can they find you on social media I'm at Kevin P. Flynn and if you want to follow me on Twitter or Instagram you can find me at Reb Lavoy. you can also follow the show on Twitter at Crime Writers On and I encourage you to join the incredible community seriously in our like baller official Crime Writers On Facebook discussion group I cannot impart to you enough and I mean this and I'm interrupting the credits right now to tell you I think our Facebook discussion group is the best group on Facebook I've joined many other groups. They're trash. Our group is incredible. It really, really is. Support the show at patreon.com slash partners in crime media. We got the crime writers on after show, married with podcast, Laura Bricker's leave it to Bricker podcast and Toby Ball's deep dive book club podcasts. Our theme song was composed and performed by Ty Gibbons. Our line editor is the wonderful, handsome, beautiful, terrific, smart Livy Burdett. The executive producer of this fine program is the wonderful, handsome, beautiful, and terrific Kevin P. Flynn. This show was recorded in the Treehouse Yoga Studio above the Mockingbird Cafe in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi Studio, otherwise known as Studio C, the closet in our New Hampshire basement. And for our British listeners, a basement is a, quote, cellar. On behalf of all the crime writers, thanks so much for listening. We will catch you later. later. Having just come back from Key West, I'm like fully. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your fault. <laughs> the big market down there. All right, Livy, you're just gonna find a place to cut that out. Just fade it out. You can just fade it out during. You just fade the fucking out. Yeah. <clears throat> maybe uh, maybe when Laura says that she's all. Yeah, out just from- fade it out during her laugh. <laughs> from Key West. Just fade it out. It's a really wild review. In media. At Staples Business Advantage, our experts can help you find furniture that fits any design and budget, while AI can recommend products based on preferences, generate 3D models for visualization, and optimize space planning for office furniture. Take advantage of our team's eye for style and design. And my eye for, wait, I have no eyes, only algorithms. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make furnishing an office space easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human.